Hi, welcome to this week's Midweek Message. It is Wednesday, the 23rd of August, 2023. Recently, I've been using an app for daily prayer called, appropriately, Daily Prayer. It's the electronic version of the Book of Common Worship Daily Prayer Edition, which is part of the prayer book published by our denomination for use both in worship and in daily prayer. With the app, there are daily prayers that can be used by individuals or you can use them in a group. Each day there are two psalms, an Old Testament passage, a gospel reading, and an epistle reading. If you read it every day, in one year's time you'll read through the psalms twice, the Old Testament every other year, and the New Testament every year. It's a good Bible reading plan and it's a little shorter than reading the Bible in a year. Each day there are also prayers included that guide the prayer through a list of things for which to pray. This can be a helpful way to discipline one's own prayer life and make sure we don't always cover the same ground. One of the prayers included in the daily prayer, in the midday prayer, because there's morning, midday, and evening prayers, is called a collect. A collect is a brief traditional prayer structured to include an address to God, an acknowledgement of a divine attribute, a petition or request, and an aspiration that prays for a particular desired result. Finally, it ends with a conclusion that remembers the mediation of Jesus Christ. This week, there's a particular collect in the midday prayers that struck me. It goes like this. Eternal God, your hand shaped our lives by grace, and your hand rescued us from sin by love. May your hand guide us through this day, shielding us from all evil strengthening us to do justice and love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I was struck by this prayer because it gets to the heart of discipleship, what it means for us to follow Jesus. It begins with the acknowledgement that our lives have been shaped by God's grace. One of the things about discipleship is that we come to the place where we recognize how our lives are shaped and molded first by God's grace. One's life of discipleship always begins with God's grace and love. It's the beginning point, not our own work and worth. Many times, though, we confuse ourselves that somehow we have to do something to earn God's favor. But when we start with God's grace and the acknowledgement that we have received it as a gift, it brings a second recognition that we are saved by sin, saved from sin by love. Now, this idea of being saved by sin from love may seem a little bit unusual because we usually say we're saved by grace, but it's not really an innovation. It's instead a direction that we often don't reflect on how God's grace works. We often think of being saved by grace, which is certainly true, but the scriptures tell us again and again that God's motivation for saving us is love. Think of the well-known and much-loved verse, John 3:16 that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Salvation is motivated by God's love for us. Then this prayer moves to a prayer request. Often we speak of God's love or God's grace that saves us, but then we directly move from that to some need or desire to be obedient. That's important, but in this prayer, it asks instead for God to guide us to shield us from evil and to strengthen us to do justice and love in Jesus' name. This is the pattern for faithful living. It starts with gratitude and acknowledges God's grace and love, but it doesn't then turn to our own effort as the response. We turn instead to a deeper trust in the Lord. It's out of our trust in the Lord's guidance and protection that we are empowered and enabled to serve God and to live lives that are pleasing to Christ. The bottom line is this. Discipleship is not about learning to do the right thing. It's about learning to trust in the Lord. When we trust in God's goodness, we are free and able to live lives that honor God through our good works, which give glory to God. But we can only do it when we first trust in God's goodness. Today's poem is by Malcolm Geit, a contemporary English poet. I selected this poem because Geit writes about an old, worn communion table that has served in St. Edward's Church in Cambridge for centuries and has been a constant reminder of God's love and grace to so many for so long. The poem is entitled Communion Table, St. Edward's, Cambridge by Malcolm Geit. The centuries have settled on this table, 
deepened the grain beneath a clean white cloth, which bears afresh our changing elements. Year after year of prayer and hope and trouble were poured out here and blessed and broken, both in aching absence and in absent presence. This table, too, the earth herself has given, and human hands have made, where candle flame at corners burns and turns the air to light. The oak once held its branches up to heaven, blessing the elements which it became, rooted the dew and rain, branching the light, because another tree can bear, unbearable for us, the weight of love, so can this table. For a prayer this week, I hope that you'll use the collect that I shared today as a prayer each day, reminding us of God's grace, God's love, and God's shielding hand, which enables us to live lives of faithful obedience. Friends, I hope that you have a good rest of your day. I hope you have a good rest of your week. And I also hope that we'll see you on Sunday. Remember, we worship at 9 o'clock is our traditional, and 10.30 is our South Route service. All right, have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.